When I was a kid, I was a little thicker than the rest of the kids my age. Sure, I was heavier than I probably should have been. And with the last name of Pratt, it didn't take the school kids too long to make the connection. Fat Pratt. You combine that with the fact that I wore glasses and I was in the smart kid class, and I was getting it from every angle. And I'm not the only one who grew up this way. Shane, he used to think that pork chops and karate chops were the same thing. He thought they were both pork chops. And because his grandmother thought it was cute, and because they were his favorite, she let him keep doing it. Not really a big deal, until the kids at school found out. And he earned his first nickname, Pork Chop. To this day, he hates pork chops. Our stories are more common than people are willing to admit. We were surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones, as if broken bones hurt worse than the names we got called, and we got called them all. This led to broken hearts, and our broken heart strings played the blues as we tried to empty ourselves so we would feel nothing. Don't tell me that hurts worse than a broken bone. A doctor can fix a broken bone. They can't fix a broken heart. Another, she was eight years old. On her first day of grade three, she got called ugly and was moved to the back of the class so she would stop being bombarded by spitballs. The school halls were battlegrounds. She found herself outnumbered day after wretched day. She used to stay inside for recess because outside, outside was worse. Outside, she'd have to rehearse running away or standing still like a statue, giving no clues that she was there. In grade five, they taped a sign to her desk that read, Beware of Dog. To this day, despite a loving husband, she does not think that she's beautiful because of a birthmark that takes up a little less than half of her face. Kids used to say she looks like a wrong answer that somebody tried to erase but couldn't quite get the job done. And they'll never understand that she's raising two kids whose definition of beauty begins with the word mom because they see her heart before they see her skin because she's always only ever been amazing. One more. He was a broken branch grafted onto a different family tree. Adopted. Not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when he became a mixed drink of one part left alone and two parts tragedy. He lived the uphills like they were mountains, and the downhills were cliffs. He felt as if life had no happiness. One part because of the tragedy, 99 parts because of the cruelty. He about gave up on life when a kid who still had his mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it as if it were something that could be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. No, we weren't the only kids who grew up this way. To this day, kids are still being called names. The classics were, hey stupid, spaz. It seems like each school has an arsenal of names getting updated every year, which begs the question, if a kid breaks in a school and no one around chooses to hear it, do they make a sound? Or are they just a soundtrack, stuck on repeat, when people say things like, kids can be cruel? Sure, cruel. We were juggling depression and loneliness, playing solitaire and spin the bottle, trying to kiss the wounded parts of ourselves and heal. But yeah, kids can be cruel. I'm here to tell you that all of this, all of this is just debris 
left over from when we finally decided to smash all of the things we thought we used to be. It can be done. We were successful. You need to do the same. Find the beauty in others and yourself. And if you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, then get a better mirror. Look a little closer. Stare a little longer. Be like us and find something inside yourself that will make you keep trying despite everyone who tells you to quit. Build a cast around your broken heart and tell yourself they were wrong. Because maybe you don't belong to a group or a clique. Maybe they decided to pick you last for basketball or everything. But you have to hold your ground despite everyone who wants to bury you beneath it. You have to believe that they are wrong. They have to be wrong. Why else would we still be here? We grow up learning to cheer on the underdog because we see ourselves in them. We stem from the root, planted in the belief that we are not what we are called. We are graduating members from the class of we made it. Not the faded echoes of voices crying out, names will never hurt you. Of course, they will. But our lives will always continue to be a balancing act that has less to do with pain and more to do with beauty. <laughs>